السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. اللهم بارك لنا في جمعنا هذا واجعله جمعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا عن بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محروما امين يا رب العالمين. يا الله بلس ذيس جاذنج. يا الله عز وجل. Make us the people at the end of the gathering they will be told كونوا مغفورا لكم قد بدل سيئاتكم حسنات. Get up, all your sins are forgiven, and all your evil deeds have been switched into good deeds. May Allah make us among them. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I'm going to ask you, how to make this different, really? Because most of the time, people come and talk, and then, Shaykh, it was a good talk, and that's it, done. Let's make it a little bit different, inshallah. I'm going to ask you a question. And uh, I want to volunteer, brother or sister. Any volunteers? Okay, stand up. Is there any mic in the crowd? Where's the shabana? Is there any mic? Any mic in the crowd? Here, is this working? Anyway, you can hear me. What's your name? Osman? Okay, Osman. What do you do? What do you do? Teaching. You're teaching, mashallah. Good, 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 good. So I'm going to ask you a question. It's only two words. And you keep following up with me, okay? Then what? After. What's next in your life? Then what? Get married. Get married. Then what? Nice wife and children. Yes, some children. That's good. Nice order. Then what? Pass away and then make for me and my wife. Uh -huh. Then you pass away, right? Then you pass away. Then I go to my daughter. All right. Good. Alhamdulillah. I need one more person. Let's give a sister. Any sister? Some question. Anybody? Nobody. Another brother. Another brother. Let's go to the sheikh. Yeah, give him the give him the mic. Yeah, give him the mic. The guy with the beard that still have some black in it. Very little. <laughs> Very little black. Soon you'll be gonna join the the, the group. Sheikh, what's your name? Hamad. Hamad Leith. What do you do, Sheikh Hamad? Alhamdulillah. Then what? Don't tell me you're going to get married. You're already married. <laughs> then what? Inshallah. Then what? Get your children married and retire. Then what? You keep busy and then what? You die. So the point is, no matter who you ask, a student, a teacher, a doctor, a Muslim, a non-Muslim, a black, white, rich, poor, no matter who you ask, this question, then what? They will all meet at the end and they will say, then I die. They will all meet at the same answer, then I die. After that, if you ask the same question, there will be there won't be a variety of answers. The answers will be limited to two, either Jannah or Nar. There's no more options. I want to do this. I want to go to Florida. I want to retire here. No more. There are two answers, Jannah or Nar. On that day, they would be separated. But the only thing is, in order to answer that question, where, then what? Is it Jannah or Nar? I have to prepare now. I cannot do much later after then I die. I'm done, right? Then what? Are you going to Jannah or, am I, or are you going to the hellfire? May Allah make us all from the people of Jannah. 
right? Then what? It's up to you right now, while you're still above the ground, to determine what is that answer, Jannah or Nar? Let me ask you another question. Allah Azza wa Jal, to my knowledge, four times in the Quran, He said, Kullu nafsin Every soul is going to taste death. Where's the mic? <clears throat> okay. Brother Lathy, give it to the brother behind him. Dwayne. Dwayne. If you were told that you're going to die tomorrow, today is your last day, what would you do? Put the mic close. What would you do? Tomorrow, fellas, today, today is your last day. Tomorrow, you're done. Tomorrow, we're going to pray Janaza, I-N-T, Abdur. What are you going to do today? Well, first, I think I would get a, a case of Red Bull. To do what? And I'll just play the bridge and go over it. Uh, again, read, read, Quran, read Quran, making salat. Making salat. Excellent. Give the brother behind you. Yes, you brother. What's your name? Mahmoud. What would you do? Today is your last day. Tomorrow is your Yeah, I will ask Allah to Ask Allah to forgive you. Mashallah. Excellent. Give the brother right behind you. Over there. Yes. Brother, what's your name? Okay, tomorrow's your janaza. So uh, I will put it. Think, think, think. I want everybody to think. Literally, tomorrow's your janaza. What are you going to do now, from now to tomorrow? So, uh, I will clean, my, clean up my affairs. Clean up all your affairs? Yes, so whatever. Excellent. Ask everybody for forgiveness. Yes. Pray Salat and all that. Okay. Istighfar. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Any of the sisters would like to answer? MashaAllah, the hayat is over. MashaAllah. Good. I love that. Okay. Anybody else? How about you, brother? Give the mic here to the brother. No, you. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah. What's your name? Mustafa. Mustafa. Tomorrow's your janazah. What are you going to do today? Or tonight? Okay. Okay. Hold it. Make dua. All right. Turn off the mic. So you heard the answers, the answers, I'm going to repent, I'm going to make a lot of istighfar, I'm going to make a lot of dua, I'm going to pray, I'm going to sit in all my affairs with everybody, because tomorrow is my last day. Now the second question, who told you that tomorrow is not your last day? So why are you not doing what you're supposed to be doing? Why are you not doing what you just said? If the doctor tells you that tomorrow is your last day, you start doing whatever you said. But Allah said in the Quran, in five minutes is your last day, and we're not doing anything about it. The doctor could be wrong, but Allah Azza wa Jal, 100%, woman asdaqu min Allahi haditha, he told us that you are going to die. And we're still living as if we are living forever. What's your plan? I'm going to make a stafar. I'm going to, why are you not doing it? I'm going to settle everything with everybody. Go ahead. How many, this is the most masjid that has janazas in the, probably in, in America. So Allah send you these janazas every single day to this community, not because of the location, to wake you up and come back to Allah Azza wa Jal. 
Why are you not doing what you just said you're doing? Why you do not perform Tawbah every single day? Why you're not why why your tongue is not constantly busy with istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness? Why are you not praying tahajjud every single night? Why don't you call that guy you haven't spoken to for two years and tell him, please forgive me, tomorrow I'm dying? What are you waiting for? For a car accident and then boom, I wish I could come back. Go fix your relationship with your parents. Unfortunately, we want to fix our relationship with our parents when they are already done. I wish my father would come back so I can give him a hug. I wish my mother would come back so I can kiss her hand. But when she was alive and he was alive, ah, screaming, yelling, rolling your eyes. If I die tomorrow, I'm going to do this, 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 and that. Who can even dare to raise his hand and say, I'm not dying tomorrow? Now we come to our question, which is our topic. And this is, I'm not going to ask you to answer it. I'm not going to say the world. I'm going to say the community here. What would the community lose if you died? What would the community, what would IANT or EPIC or VRIC, anyway, what would they lose if you die? Would even anybody notice? Is it going to take us 45 minutes to describe so people can know who you are? Or, Allahu Akbar, Allah, we're going to miss him. He used to do this, she, all the time, volunteering, helping, running, uh, going to visit the sick janazas. Uh, Somebody is in debt, she covers his debt. He, what would the world lose, or what would the community lose by you disappearing? If between you and yourself, the answer is nothing, then Allah Azza wa Jal put you here today at this time to hear these words so you can do something. Allah said in the Quran, Allah, when I heard this ayah, I could not believe it. Ibn Abbas said, Allah told us in the Quran that there are people when they die, bakat alayhim, the earth and the heaven cry. They cry. They said, how come, Ya Ibn Abbas, what, how does the earth and the, and, and the sky cry for the loss of someone? He said, because on this earth, they used to do so much good that the earth misses them. And that Ahmed was going up to the sky, the, the sky misses them, miss that Ahmed that was coming up. Would the earth and the sky die? I cry if I die. What would the community lose? Are they going to notice? Are they going to notice that my spot on the first row is missing? Are they going to notice? Oh, brother so and so died. Who's that? My brother, uh, he's tall. Dark a little bit. What's his name? Ah, Muhammad. Ah, Muhammad. Ah, very easy. Muhammad who? <laughs> which which committee? Where where what did he do? Where did she volunteer? This is these are all valid questions, Yahwan. These are all valid questions. And it's excellent that every once in a while to remind ourselves for the reason of our existence. Why are we here? There has to be a reason. Imagine you see somebody in, a, in the lobby of a hotel and you say, what are you doing here? I have no clue. Impossible. You must be visiting that country for 
medical reason, for education, for tourism. He must be for something, for a reason. Why are you here? What are you doing here? So similarly, what are, what are we doing here? We are not here to watch movies and eat popcorn. We are not here to go through Instagram every five seconds. My, my, I start trembling if my, you know, I have to keep watching. I, 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 need, I need that dose all the time. This is not the reason for our existence. We are here to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And worship Allah does not mean 24-7 in the masjid. Worship Allah by the way that you do business. Worship Allah by the way you treat your spouse. Worship Allah by the way you raise your children. Worship Allah by the way you conduct yourself and you behave. Worship Allah Azza wa Jal at school. Worship Allah wherever you are. 24-7, we are supposed to be worshipping Allah. This is our job. And Allah Azza wa Jal, from His mercy, from His mercy, He keeps giving us chances. Imagine that I work for a company and they said, you have to show up from 9 to 5. The first day I got there at 9.30. They said, okay, but please make sure tomorrow at 9. The next day I get up, I, I arrive at 10. They said, listen, be sure, you, know, you have to be here at nine. The third day I did not show up. I'm fired. I'm done. And alhamdulillah, I mean that Allah does not treat us the way we treat each other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all forgiving, the all merciful. If he treats us and he rushes the adab instantly, I I missed Fajr, I woke up in the morning blind. Imagine. I left the house without hijab, I come back bold. Alhamdulillah, Allah does not treat us like that. Allah said, no, 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 I'm going to keep giving them chances after chances after chances. But there's a day that will come, that's it. No more chances. So, ya akhwan, this is the time to remember that I am here to do one job. And this job is to worship Allah. And Allah, I'm so happy that there's a lot of youth in the crowd. Because... Allah is my witness. I make dua for you all the time. You are, you are in, a, in, a, in, a, in a state that is unbelievable. You are bombarded day and night with haram. Left and right, up and down. May Allah protect you. Wallahi, may Allah protect you. Think about your state and think even about the Sahaba. The, the haram that you're exposed to, no one on earth in the history was exposed to. No one. How long did it take the Sahabi to see a naked woman? Now, press of a button or trip to Walmart. Wallahi, may Allah protect you. May Allah protect you. It needs a lot of jihad. Jihad. The daily jihad. The jihad of lowering the gaze. The jihad of refusing a haram job, haram income. But Allah promised. Whomsoever strive and struggle in my cause, I will make it easy for him. Be connected with Allah Azza wa Jal. And you will feel safe in the dunya, above the ground, under the ground. And the day you meet Allah Azza wa Jal, I will end with this. Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad, one of the tabi tabi'een, he saw a man and he said, how old are you? The man said, 60 years old. And I want everybody to answer that question according to their age. So if I say, how old are you? You're 35. You tell yourself, I'm 35. So the man said, 60 years old, Sulfulayl said, you've been traveling to Allah for 60 years and you're about to arrive. Right?
You're traveling to Allah for 30, 40, 20. You've been traveling to Allah for that long. And you're about to arrive. About to arrive means you're about to die. Every breath. Now, from the moment my talk starts, till now, I am closer to my grave. Right? Every breath. One breath less from going to the grave. How old are you? 60 years old. You've been traveling to Allah for 60 years and you're about to arrive. So the man immediately said, he was like, you know, as if someone shocked him. He said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Fudayl immediately said, do you know what does that mean? What you just said, do you know what it means? Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He said, what does it mean? He said, inna lillah, that means you're abd. Inna lillah, it means you are abd. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un, that means you are going to report. You're going back to him. So the man said, what should I do? He said, when you are abd, that means you're going to stop. And when you are going back to Allah, that means you're going to be questioned. So prepare the answers. Prepare your answers. The man start trembling. What should I do, Ya Sheikh? He said, be good. Do a lot of good. With whatever is left from your life, Allah will forgive the best. But if you do evil with whatever is left, you will be accountable for what is left, whatever is left, whatever is gone, and whatever you're doing right now. And that is the message from every single one of us. I mean, this, this community itself, when we lost a brother, Nabil, 16, 17 years old. So what is fooling you? What is fooling me? My age, my health, my wealth, my looks. What is it that I'm not next? What is it? No discrimination. When the time comes, Wallahi, I could be next or you could be next and we would be standing in front of Allah and answering. Yes, the Jum'ah, I gave the khutbah and I advise you to go watch it. If I'm standing on the member right now, and I assume you all trust me, and I said, Wallahi, Wallahi, you immediately become all ears because after swearing, something very powerful is going to come. And people are saying, why the sheikh is swearing? We all believe him. He doesn't have to swear. Forget about me. Allah, walillahi al-mathal al-a'la. And to Allah belongs the best example. Allah azza wa jal. Fawa rabbika. Fawa rabbika. By your Lord, ya Muhammad. Fawa rabbika. Lanas'alannahum ajma'een. Amma kanu ya'maloon. By your Lord, Ya Muhammad, I'm going to ask every single one of them about every word they said, about every penny they earned, about every penny they spent, about every move they took. I will ask them, Allah is swearing. That should shake you. Are you ready for the answers? Could be tomorrow. We will all be questioned. Sometimes... Since we have some youth here, you will be tempted. I was telling them today, uh, the Sunday halakha. I was telling them, sometimes you might be tempted. Oh, this is a $300,000 job. 300000 Allahu Akbar. But then they said, every time you go to a client, you have to take a bottle of alcohol as a gift. If it takes you a minute to think about the, to take the job or not, something is wrong with you. The, the answer should be instantly done. We are out. No way. If that's the condition, no way. 400, 500, I don't care. Allah sent you a test. A quick test to see what you're going to do. Because you will be questioned. Where did you get the money? 
and where did you spend it? And the more money we have, the longer is the accountability. So what are we doing right now? You know what we're we doing right now? We are working so hard to be delayed to enter Jannah. <laughs> we are working so hard to make a lot of money and then the questioning will be bigger. Does that mean I don't have to get money? No, no. Be ambitious, work, struggle, help humanity, help mankind. Great. But, wallahi, a penny of haram is not worth it. Penny of haram is not worth it. So, what is the message today? I want everybody to think, what would the community lose if I left? Did I establish a legend? Was I effective in any way? And don't immediately think, I have to be share talking here, or I have to invent uh, the iPhone. No, no, no. You could change someone's life with one word by giving them small advice, by listening to them if they are going through hardship, by consoling them. A lot of things you could help. You're always there for your people. That's what is going to make a difference. So let's work extremely hard before the angel of death comes, take the paper of the test from in front of us and say, time is up. Zakhmullah khair. Assalamu alaikum.